Hi guys, so this is my article presentation for EMG and my article was titled Inter and Intra Subject Similarity of Muscle Synergies During Bench Press with Slow and Fast Velocity. So just a little bit of an introduction here before we get started. Uh, the landscape of, of this research topic when this study was done, um, there was a little bit of conflicting beliefs around how much variability researchers were finding in some different muscle synergy components uh, when comparing different subjects, but also when comparing the same subject doing a different task. So some researchers, researchers believe that muscle synergy components would stay stable across subjects, but maybe change depending on the task. And then other researchers thought that muscle synergy components would vary from subject to subject but generally be stable from task to task. And then this study in particular did something that I think was pretty novel at the time by looking at the same task, which is going to be you know the bench press. Um, but they looked at it at a low bar velocity condition and a high bar velocity condition to try to stratify some of these uh, differences and similarities. Another thing that I want to mention that I thought was interesting in the study and I think is really useful was that they used non-negative matrix factorization. Um, so basically we have um, two muscle synergy components and what a muscle synergy is is it's any event where a coordinated group of or sorry where a coordinated recruitment of a group of muscles happens. So say we are talking about the bench press and we're talking about the concentric portion of the bench press we can assume that the pec major the anterior delt the triceps and the biceps are all going to have a big role in that and that's going to that group of muscle is going to be one uh, muscle synergy but we have these things called muscle synergy vectors which can describe the relative weighing of each of those muscles i just listed within that synergy within that activation event we also have synergy activation coefficients, which is a, a temporal description of the contribution of the muscle synergy to the overall muscle activity pattern. So you can have several muscle synergies within one given movement, and throughout the course of the movement, synergy activation coefficients can describe where those different synergies come into play. So the purpose of this study, again, I really just want to highlight that, um, that we're, we're looking at similarities from two different angles. We're looking at similarities from subject to subject, between subjects, but we're also looking at similarities across different tasks uh, by using an exercise or a movement that we all know and love, which is the bench press. And then I thought this figure did a really good job at just helping me understand it, so I might as well um, put it on here. So at the top left, we have muscle synergies, and you can see that there's one muscle synergy in red and another muscle synergy in green. M1, M2, M3 are the muscles that are in these muscle synergies, and as you can see for muscle synergy one, muscles one and three have higher relative weights than muscle two, and then in muscle synergy two, muscle 2 has a higher relative weight than muscle 3. So these are two different activation events or activation patterns that are happening within a movement that can be stratified and, and kind of studied a little bit further. And then the coefficients, which are dependent on time, you can see that muscle synergy and muscle, sorry, muscle synergy 1 and muscle synergy 2, they both peak at the beginning of the movement but it looks like muscle synergy 2 does so a little bit earlier and then they have a, a bit of a different um, signature at the end of their waveform and then muscle synergy 1 also uh, shows some activation at the end of the movement. Really quick for the subjects and procedures here, um, there were 13 male participants that were relatively experienced. They did strength training for uh, two years for about for about two to three times a week. They warmed up with 20 kilograms to start 
and uh, they gradually increase the weight on the bench press by about 10 to 40 kilograms depending on their capacity and then the way that they set up their three rep maximum for the bench press was they started with eight sets for the sorry eight reps for their first set then they moved to five and then they just did triples until they established their um, three rep max and they took them about four sets on average i computed the average three rep max to 225 pounds just because i kind of wanted to compare it to myself um, but that's what it shook out to and they also received four minute breaks in between sets or in between successive sets and then for the fast and slow conditions they brought them back down to 75 percent of their three rep max and um, three reps were performed uh, for the slow condition and then the, the load was further decreased to 60 and they did three sets of eight and then two sets of 12 for the slow and uh, fast velocity conditions. Um, this resulted in uh, 24 total reps, but the authors utilized 21 cycles, which is just the time from uh, the top of the bench press position to the next top of the bench press position, and that's what left them with 21 cycles to analyze muscle coordination. And then the recordings themselves were taken with bipolar surface electrodes that were placed pretty much all across the body, uh, the typical upper extremity muscles that you would uh, assume, but also, you know, some trunk muscles like the rectus spinae, the latissimus dorsi, and then lower body muscles like the rectus femoris, uh, biceps femoris, and other lower body muscles. So it'll be interesting to see how those results come out. And then a reference electrode was mounted at the lateral malleolus. Uh, they are processed, the, the measurements were processed using a digital bandpass filter at 10 to 400 hertz. And like I said, um, the, the, the real insight from this data came from using a non-negative matrix factorization algorithm to actually derive some of these muscle synergy components. Okay, let's look at muscle synergy coefficients here. Um, and please ignore this title up here that says vector. We're looking at coefficients. These are both muscle synergy coefficients. So again, coefficients are going to describe the, the relative weighing and contribution of each muscle synergy. And um, as you can see, we're looking at uh, both the slow and the fast condition here. So for the coefficient um, for muscle synergy one here this is what i meant by this title muscle synergy one we're looking at the synergy coefficient and this is under here you can see the phase of the bench press so we're starting up at the top coming back down and pressing back up you can see that both slow and fast conditions um, had that same kind of peak right in the middle right about halfway through the bench press and then it came back down and then gradually kind of came back up right at the very end towards the lockout portion of the bench press. And then moving on to Synergy 2, you can see that they both follow each other pretty well. Um, if anything, maybe the fast condition has a little bit more activation on this component of the lift versus the slow condition has a little bit more activation in Synergy 1. Um, but all in all, what I'm drawing from these is that since these muscle synergy coefficients are so close together, we can basically assume that muscle synergy coefficients are staying relatively stable throughout both conditions for the fast and the slow for both synergies too. And then for the muscle synergy vectors, so the vectors are going to be describing the overall contribution of each muscle um, within the synergy. So for this, they used um, what's called uh, the cross correlation. And we see three conditions here, or three little notches on the x-axis. This is slow, slow. So they're comparing subject, different subjects, both in the slow condition. And then this is slow 
or sorry, fast fast on the next if we're looking at the graph on the left, fast fast between subjects, and then we're looking at slow fast for the interest subject. So slow fast, the last little notch that we see is <clears throat> actually the same subject completing the movement in a slow and a fast condition, whereas the first two are different subjects. So as you can see for the first muscle synergy, synergy one, there's a very high correlation from interest subject slow and fast conditions. So we're all the way up here, almost at, I would say, 0.88. Whereas uh, the slow versus slow between subjects and fast versus fast between subjects was only down by around 0.65 or 0.67. And then muscle synergy two was a little bit of a different story. Um, the slow, slow and the slow, fast conditions showed a little bit higher correlation, but the results that the author spoke about were mainly from Synergy 1. So what I gather from those two tables and the overall results of this study um, would, that be, would be that there are two muscle synergies that primarily describe the pattern of muscle coordination during the bench press, and one of them primarily describes the eccentric movement the other one primarily describes concentric movement, so synergy one is eccentric, synergy two is concentric. Um, muscle synergy vector two uh, really did highlight uh, a higher relative weighing of the agnus muscles. So that was that concentric portion where the pec major and the anterior deltoid really come into play. And then the, the relative weighing of synergy vector one favored the lower extremity muscles, and I think this is more so from a stability standpoint, a bracing standpoint, where something like your soleus and your vastus lateralis might really come into play as you're gripping the floor with your feet and trying to make sure that you maintain stability throughout the movement. And then another thing, and this was the main thing, is that synergy vectors show a high degree of similarity across tasks, yet they tend to vary between individuals. And then activation coefficients tend to vary between subjects, but will vary according to the task. So this is actually the opposite. Synergy vectors and activation coefficients tend to have the opposite effect when comparing different tasks and different subjects, because synergy vectors will be robust throughout different tasks, but it could be an individual difference in different subjects, and then activation coefficients will vary according to the task. So that's what I have for my research article, and I hope you found it useful. Looking forward to seeing everyone else. Thanks.